I love Mac OS. This is the first time I've really been able to say that I really, really love my computer. You know, every time I do some sort of hardware upgrade in the past, it's just always been like, this is cool, but Windows. <laughs> you know? There's, there's just, there's so many things in Windows, even, you know, including Windows 10, that are still sort of using the standards back from Windows 98. Just so many things that are left like that. And instead of them trying to revamp and fix the things that were outdated about their, their, their interface, they take an entirely new operating system, they started with Windows 8, entirely new operating system and haphazardly put it on top of the old one. And they don't fix the problems with the old one, you know. Uh, one of the biggest ones is their sound mixer. If you use any sort of, of professional audio equipment or software, uh, you're going to be using ASIO standards, not the standard Windows sound. And that's because standard Windows sound sucks. The only thing it's good for is games and consuming other people's content, really. If you want to make music, you've, you've got to use ASIO. Otherwise, if you try to reduce the amount of latency, you get a bunch of crackling. And even when you use ASIO, you can have a screaming machine, but if you try to bring the latency down too much, you still get the crackling, okay? Since I've switched to Mac OS, I I've never been able to experience playing a software instrument through MIDI and it feels like zero latency. Maybe it's two milliseconds at most latency. Perfect. Just boom. I, I play the keys. It's like din, din, din. It's not din, din, din. You know, it's it's nice. It's nice. Um. There, there, there are like when I talked about other things though, like visually with with Windows. Okay, the taskbar. Okay. If you set have the taskbar set to hide, you can watch it, it animated about 15 frames a second, somewhere around there. Um, it still doesn't animate smoothly. It may not seem like not that big of a deal, but they're using the main processor to animate that. Um, <laughs> just something as basic as that, they're still using the main processor. The only time they don't use the main processor is if you are using a modern app that's in full screen. And then when you bring that up, it's actually using the GPU. They have just, they don't seem to be willing to, to, to rework or fix or modify so many of these things that, that have been the same since Windows 98. Um, oh, another thing about the, the Windows mixer, right? For instance, if you have Pro, Pro Gear, you plug something in that's just one channel, Windows can't just see it as one channel. The driver manufacturers for those cards have to do some cheating and make it so, well, we're going to double that one channel uh, so it comes out of both sides in order to not make it just come out of one side. Because Windows can't see Pro Audio Gear. All Windows knows how to work with, really, are, you know, your sound that comes on your motherboard. That's pretty much all it knows how to handle. Mac OS, for many, many years, has had Pro Audio Gear in mind. Hell, I didn't even have to install drivers when I, when I got this, my, the Hackintosh going. I didn't even have to install drivers for my uh, Focusrite Scarlet 2 i4. I didn't even have to install drivers. It was working perfectly, perfectly from the start. That's because they have Pro Audio Gear in mind immediately. Um, ah, one of the things that I had been frustrated for a little bit, but I knew there was an answer to it, but I didn't know how to get to it, is uh, uh, how, you know, I want to get to a specific window. Well, I just put Mission Control into the dock, and I just click Mission Control, and it puts out, lays out all the windows that are open in this really easy to select way, in a really organized way. Sorry, but that, I'm sorry, it blows away windows. That part of it blows away windows. It's, it's much better layout. 
And of course it always uses the, the, the GPU, it always... Everything moves smoothly, everything looks good on that. They... The aesthetics of it, they know how to do it. Microsoft does not. Microsoft has their idea of, you know, the, you know what they've... Like I said, they... Maybe it was a previous version of this video where they'll, you know... Instead of fixing the problems or or modifying things to be a little bit more current, they've taken an entirely different operating system and haphazardly put it on top of something that's kind of archaic. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, um, Mac OS is offering me everything I've wanted in a computer and things that Microsoft is never going to do with their OS. They're never going, they're, they're never going to catch up to this. They're not. I don't think Linux is going to catch up to this anytime soon either. Hell, it took until, what was it, 2006 just to get decent font rendering in Linux? Those ugly, chunky-looking fonts. Ugh. I guess I'm kind of sounding like uh, that Monty Python skit uh, about uh, uh, tinny words versus woody words. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, another thing I was thinking about a little bit earlier is is how I, I end up thinking about this quite a bit when, when I'm starting to get into the mode of writing music again is what EDM fans will say about EDM. <laughs> I hear them say, oh, EDM can incorporate, it's, it's really, can, it's so diverse, it can be so, oh, it's so huge and diverse. No, it isn't. 4-4 four, four, or 6-8, period. You know, if you go too much into... Now I can't remember the name of the genre, where it, you hear lots of... And it's almost random sounding at times. I forgot what that that style is called. That's not really EDM. Some of that stuff you can't dance to, okay? Any of the stuff you can dance to, it's either 4-4 four, four, or 6-8. And when you try to have a conversation with the people that push forth, oh, it can be everything! Uh, they don't even know what time signatures are, and when you try to describe to them what time signatures are, they'll say things like, oh, Britney Spears' womanizer is 4-4. Four, four. No, it's not. No, it's 4-4, four, four, but it's syncopated in some, some other name of something that, uh, you know, I'm like, no, it is 6-8. Dit, 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 dit. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one. And yes, if you count the, the one, uh, and, and the four, you can go one, two, three, four, but that's not four, four. It's still six, eight. But you'll you'll never get them to see it. Um, and it's always bothered me where where you know with EDM you got all these these different names of genres. It's just like, oh well, well it's this type of techno, and this type of techno, and this name for a type of techno, and this name for a type of techno, this type of house, this type of house, this type of trance, this type of trance, this type of trance. And you try to get them to describe well, what specifically, um, why is that style called that? And they won't be able to give you any technical reason for it. It's all about the, the, the feeling, I guess. Oh, the way it makes them feel. So it makes them feel like this. They're going to call it a completely different name, even though musically, music theory-wise, it's exactly the same as these others. You know, there, there's there's some that I, I just couldn't believe it. I was just like, you, you got to be kidding. When I, and I finally get down to the meat and potatoes of what some of the differences are. Oh, the lead has more reverb on it. The little background arpeggios are slower or faster. So that means it's a completely different type of music? I guess so. <laughs> you know, it's like, okay. Um, 
I just always, I've got to laugh at that shit. I, I'm sorry, I, I just do. Um, and then one more thing I was thinking about is, uh, it's a pet peeve of mine. When someone will, at, will be on a forum or they'll be on some help area and they'll ask a question about something. Have you seen a product that does this? And it's supposed to be a place where you ask these kinds of questions. And then people's answers to those questions will be, well, you shouldn't need that, or you shouldn't want that. Instead of just saying, no, I haven't heard of that. I, I haven't seen that before, I, and I don't know where to help you. I mean, if you just have to answer something, but you don't actually have an answer to them, but you just have to say something, then just tell them, hey, I haven't seen this, I haven't seen it, I don't know where to help you. But don't sit there and tell them they don't need it, or they shouldn't need it, or they shouldn't want it. Uh, the most recent one is uh, that I saw, you know, it was b before I came by to here, I was just looking something up. I, I, I look this up every couple months, is uh, 60 frames per second webcams. And someone was asking, have you seen 60 frames per second webcams? Well, you're just going to uh, you're just going to make, give the people that that you're you're making these videos. Uh, you're going to just give them motion sickness. You're just going to make them uncomfortable. Oh, you're just going to give it soap opera effect. Nobody needs that. There's there's absolutely it's not having 60 frames a second on a camera is totally unnecessary. And they're saying, well, I just want it. And then all they want to do is argue with the person about how it's not necessary. And, and that shit makes me mad. I'm sorry. It makes me mad. Don't tell people what they want. Don't tell people what they should want or shouldn't want. If they're asking for something, give them the information or say, hey, I don't know how to help you. I haven't seen it. And sometimes when people have done this to me when I've asked for some, about something, I get a little bit rude back. You know, I'm like, um... Hey, it, it, don't don't tell me this kind of thing. I'm asking uh, if you know of this. I don't want to get into a debate about whether something like this is even necessary. I don't want to sit there and, and you know... I, and then I'm told I am the rudest person possible because, you know, well, I'm just trying to help. No, you're not helping. Telling someone that they shouldn't want something is not helping them. So, um... Yeah, that's just a big pet peeve of mine, so. Uh, but all in all, I, I'm really happy right now. I, I've, I, and I, I'm using uh, Logic Pro right now, and I, I'm just amazed at the instruments. I mean, I had gotten those Sample Tank 3 instruments, and I still plan on using them in another program, because I can't use them in Logic Pro, but these instruments that come with Logic Pro, they're just fucking awesome. They're, they're, they're... I can't believe the pianos. When I got Sample Tank 3, I was a little disappointed in some of the pianos. I was like, I was expecting a little better than this. Um, but on, on, on Logic Pro uh, X, holy shit. I, I can't believe some of the, qual the quality of some of these sounds. And then there's these synth pads that were totally missing from Sample Tank 3. I was like, well, I was really hoping they'd have more of those, but there they are in, in Logic Pro X. I'm like, yes, yes, this is exactly what I was wanting. Um, and Logic Pro um, has some things laid out, to me, a lot better than a, a number of things about Pro Tools. Pro Tools has always been, you know, they kind of do things the Adobe way in some ways. Adobe has this tendency to, well, we want to do it different because different is better, <laughs> you know? And, uh, <clears throat> you know, just do it different for the sake of doing it different instead of doing it in a way that flows better, but, you know. Um, anyway, I'm really, really happy right now, so.